Hey, it's me. This video is going to be all about monster variety, which is fundamental for any good monster catching game. In the last video, I had dragons, snakes, and lizards, but I obviously need more variety than just reptiles. I also made the dragon look way cooler. I'm going to look at real life for some monster inspiration. There are six major animal groups, fish, birds, mammals, invertebrates, reptiles, and amphibians. Amphibians and reptiles are very similar from an animation perspective, so I'm going to mark both of those as done for now. Fish don't have legs, so they should be pretty easy to animate procedurally. I like easy, so I'll start with fish. I also made an in-game body editor for monster creation. It can change colors, body shape, limb size, and fine details like eyes and spikes. Usually when I make a new creature, I start with a pre-existing animal and change it into what I want. For the fish, it will be no different and I'll start with the older body of a snake. I'll make it taller until it's shaped like a fish. And I already made an eel almost by accident. I'll add a few more details and just complete the unplanned eel. Wow, that looks nice. Nice. Back to the fish. Let's add some fins, make the eyes bigger, the body shorter, and the eel is now a fish. That was surprisingly easy. I'm not sure how fish will work from a gameplay perspective. I don't really want them to just float on land, but if they don't float, they will be unusual outside of water, which is going to be like 90% of the game. I'm undecided, but maybe I'll just give some fish limbs and have the legless fish be unusable by the player. Alright, let's move on to invertebrates. Most invertebrates are either bugs or marine animals. Again, because most of the game is going to be on dry land, I'm going to skip the marine invertebrates and just focus on the bugs. First, I'll start with the body of a skink and give it the shape of a bug. Now, I'll give it an extra set of legs and some antennas. Code-wise, antennas are basically just legs that point into the air. I'll color it correctly and an ant is done. I also made a spider, which is basically the same as an ant but with an extra set of legs. The mouth appendages, or pedipalps for you biology nerds, have the same code as the antennas, but are shorter and point down. Alright, four down, two to go. Birds. Bird wings are actually really hard because they're going to need to be fully animated when open but also fully line up with the body when closed. Making bird wings sounds hard, so I'll just put it off for later. I was able to make a flightless bird though. It's kind of wonky, but I'm calling it finished for now. Only mammals are left. Same process again. I'll start with the body of a skink and shape it toward a dog. And it looks like... It looks like trash. There are a lot of problems, but I think the biggest issue is the legs. Salamanders and lizards have two bone limbs, but mammals have three. I tried increasing the number of bones per limb, but it looked even weirder. I looked at some pictures of a dog and noticed that their legs bend zigzag, where one joint is forward and the other will be backward. My current inverse kinematics joint solver doesn't have the ability to produce this complex of a leg, so I started thinking about some alternatives. The most obvious answer would be to make my own boning and skeletal rigging system, but that would probably take weeks or months and may not even work in the end. A simpler but still pretty complex approach that I tried was to take the angle from the top of the leg to the foot and compare that to the first joint to make sure it's bending properly. Unfortunately, I could never get this solution to really work well. I was stuck on this problem for a few days, but in the end I came up with a surprisingly simple solution. I just applied a forward pull in the first joint and a backward pull in the second joint every frame. My current joint solver then just does its thing normally. No changes were required to the code. I just added a little push and pull force and somehow it worked fine. The legs look pretty good, and with a few more additions and tweaks, I had an okay looking dog. Okay, I now have a little bit of representation from all six of the animal groups, so I should be able to make a pretty good variety of monsters. So here's a quick showcase of what I made. I really need some good names for these dudes, so if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment. I also plan on renaming the entire game. The old name, Beast Socket, is kind of hard to say clearly and I'm not happy with it anymore. If you have any suggestions, I'm all ears. I've decided to get a little more far-fetched with the monster design and add some clothes and weapons, which are not at all realistic, but it adds a ton of personality. I really like this king dude. So I guess that's it. The next video, or maybe the next next video, will be about true crossbreeding, or what happens if you beat a rat with a dragon or an ant with a fish. Thanks for watching.